welcome back to the channel again everybody thanks for taking another look at one of these videos this time around it's a hot wheels 2012 toyota supra So this car is actually one of the ones I picked up from one of the toy fairs early on in the year for 30 pence. So it's not one that I played with as a child, but nevertheless, it's one that I always wanted to do. It's got 2012 stamped underneath, but that's probably from the original casting. This actual release with these graphics on the side, this G-Ready, was actually 2016 from the Hot Wheels Speed Graphics range. So like most of them of this era now, they've got plastic bases, Pretty good detailing underneath, I think. Well, it will be good detailing underneath once you start whipping all the paint and what have you after. Although the graphics don't look too bad, to be fair. Don't like the blue windscreens as always, but again, not too bad. The rear aerofoil, a bit toy-like, which will get taken off eventually. So if you don't know how to remove the bodies, there is another video in my channel if you want to go and take a look at that. So I won't repeat that process. And again, when it comes to removing the paint, take another look at that video but once we've taken it apart pretty standard decent enough casting on the top no drama because it's a fairly new one so it hasn't been bashed around or anything so that's okay all good to go cheap plastic base a little bit of detail on the back end but a bit like a toy cracker i suppose at the end of the day these cheap and cheerful ones interior really good nice little bit of detail although i won't be using too much of that only the dashboard and steering wheel type assembly and then, as I mentioned, these blue, horrible coloured glass, but we'll get rid of that. Again, as I just quickly mentioned, you can take another look at the channel for how I remove the paint. There's a couple of different ways I do that. So without bogging this video down, please take a look in the description to the links to how to do that. But once it's all taken apart, I'm sorry, all the paint's taken off it. As always, nice little details underneath. You know, it's amazing how much the thick paint from factory does take away some of these details especially in the shut lines and door handles and stuff like that ironically i'm not too bothered about this front grill at the moment as you'll see as we get along so the paint has been a little bit difficult to shift from that but first of all we'll start with just getting rid of some of these other little bits that i don't want namely the rear spoiler so it's okay but it's just a little bit industrial looking i don't think it looks or suits the car particularly well so i use this little jeweler's file again or coping saw jeweler's saw sorry not a file it's a jeweler's saw fairly cheap to get on ebay and amazon again i'll put a few links down in the description if you don't know how to get hold of one of these really easy to saw through and take off this little rear bit although it does leave some of the little legs or arms to the spoiler which i'll file down in a short while but we're starting to make the first bit of the mods so onto the grill at the front i want that to actually be a grill at the front so i'll just do a few little chain holes across the front here so making it saw the whole aperture a little bit easier you can just go from one hole to the next hole if you like so fairly easy and safe to do if you've got a little vice to hold in hold the car in place and then with this saw dead straightforward and really easy just to go from one hole to the next so you're not spending half your life sawing away at a part and could potentially drift off and go somewhere else so it's never good but once you've got through a few and made enough room to get a small little modeling file in just the last step of the process is just to take away the burrs open it up a little bit more and you have got an open grill you could do this with other parts i did it fairly similar thing with the last Jaguar XK120 project that I did but there you go it's got actually ironically on the chassis base it's got some plastic detail behind that which is hidden so it's a bit of a shame why they never did it in the first place really but there you go we can now see through it so onto these 
little legs or arms or whatever was holding the spoiler on the back I'll just remove them so I'll start it with the small rotary tool just to take them down to a fairly manageable size before I finish it off but here you go just giving it a quick light tickle just to bring it down and again I keep saying it all the time just let the tools do the work if you start pushing down on it and make a pig's ear of it at this stage you've wasted it so just take your time really and then with a little sanding board little modeling board just finish it off to a more smoother natural finish again the primer and the paint will hold any hide any light scratches should I say but there you go once you've taken a bit of time you've got a despoilered rear end of the Supra so I'm going to re remove the rear bumper part or part of the rear bumper should I say so I'm going to put in a little rear lower splitter so I'm just going to use some masking tape just to mark out where I want it to go and again using this little jeweler's saw I have got the little band saw but that's a little bit too difficult sometimes to get into the tight area especially where there's body posts and stuff at the back so this little saw is getting used more and more now in these videos there you go you can just see the body post there it's a little bit difficult sometimes to put it on the the bigger tools but once you've cut it away and filed it same process really as before with the opening up of the front you may have to just knock off a few of the burrs once you've taken this masking tape out of the way but there you go we've just lifted up the rear end of it a little bit ready to make a little rear splitter air dam on the back or diffuser and just quickly showing you now just, it's always good just to keep putting the car back together now and again just to see how it's going to look then wheels will come off it as well although they don't look too bad actually to be fair it's just a bit of a bit of a funny color so let's just start with that actually then and just quickly remove these rear axles and wheels and all I'm using is just a little pair of pliers just to nip away at this little holder just to cut into it and I don't remove all of them because I still want to be able to locate it of a fashion afterwards but I'm using some of these garage 64 wheels again and they've got a really good little axle system a really thin tiny tube and a little pin which simply pushes through the wheel and slots into the tube and the good thing about it is when you glue this pin into the tube you can actually widen it a bit as well so there's not any cutting really to do the tubes always seem to fit perfectly into a standard width chassis and if the wheel track is any wider it's simpler you can just adjust the pins as you glue them in so they're really really good highly recommend them i'm going to use some chrome bandits photo etched parts this time on this car and i've used them in the past i've used a seat i think on the london taxi job that i did and this time i'm going to use their little replica brake discs and they do have the calipers to go with them but for this one I want the, the disc to spin round a little bit so I'm going to actually not mount the calipers and the discs to the axle or to a little bracket behind the axle I'm actually going to fit them direct to the wheel and to do that this specific wheel anyway I've had to open the hole out a little bit with a file as you just saw but by opening it up a little bit they'll push straight onto the wheel and you can see the nice and clear right up behind the spokes so obviously naturally when the car's rolling you'll see the discs rotating round as well so they do 
look really, really good. Again, I'll put the links in the description down below. I've got a big presence on Instagram, so you'll you'll see all through there where you can get the stockists because they've got various stockists all around the world. But again, here, just quickly showing you again now, I'm actually going to glue this wheel on. What I mean is just by dabbing a little bit just on the end of this pin and then locating it onto the end of this tube. And you can mop up any residue that's left dangling along with a little, well, I use a little cocktail stick to be honest, but you could use anything just to get rid of it. But what I always tend to do when I'm using this type of glue is just a little bit of activator just to seal the deal. And then we have a nice little roller like that. And they actually look pretty good. Now I keep saying it. Cores in primer, cores down to the bare metal. They actually look pretty goddamn cool. So look a bit daft if I had a range of just all these cars in, in this sort of state. But no, nah, they do look kind of cool. I kind of like it. So right on now to doing this rear little air dam spoiler diffuser thing. It's going to start with moving this rear exhaust now. Just shaving it off a little bit, just to make way for a little bit of styrene, which is going to end up here. So nothing too fancy. It's just enough, just to get enough clearance to the parts that I'm going to stick over there. So I'm just all I'm doing now is just quickly cutting it and firing it away. But first little piece of styrene I did is just to cut a little slither away, matched it to the profile of the rear bumper and the rear of the chassis just so I can slot it in there as a mounting plate of a fashion if you like top of it it's going to fit in somewhere like this and no specific profile I'm just doing a number of fins again cut out of half a mil styrene which are going to sit basically glued to the styrene and glued to the chassis and i'm using a little magnetic jig holder i don't know if you've ever seen these before again links in the description everybody i'll put this down below but they're really good you can just use these little magnets shift them around place the parts in hold parts up sandwich parts in it's really good so perfect for what i'm doing here and i'm using some tamiya thin glue this time because i'm not too sure the styrene will or the mech sorry the mech will glue the styrene to the plastic so it'll take a little bit longer so what i want to do is glue to both materials so by using this little tamiya plastic thin plastic it's sort of lovely it fills and rolls into all the little tiny gaps and glues pretty much straight away so it's good glue for that tight and difficult things and you can maneuver it a little bit you've got a little bit of a window as i'm just showing you here to move it as well in case it's not quite in the right place you wanted it to do so onto the decals and i make them all myself there will be an announcement soon on this uh, not being too cryptic but i turn down too many people now to ignore this so uh, something will be happening soon and i will unveil that but Suffice to say, I've been a designer for, God, more than 25 odd years and I've been doing this for a lot longer in the modelling sort of circle. So I will come back to that later on, but uh, I will be announcing that in a few months or whatever. So a month or so. So onto the interior now. Um, as always, I want to craft my own little race interior for these. Again, out of my beloved styrene. So I will start by just doing a little base platform to mount this all on to sit inside the chassis so what i'm going to do is a very straightforward plate if you like nothing too fancy but enough to start building it all on and i always say treat it a bit like lego or if you're of the modern age like some of these youngsters who like Minecraft and all that, just think of it as you keep building up and building up and building up. If anything looks too complicated, just split it down into little components and assemble things up. And just keep building it. 
it's not always going to be perfect first time. But the good thing about this stuff is you can keep modifying it, keep cutting it, keep trimming it, keep sanding it. And there is a video on me making interiors. Hence, I'm skipping over quite a few of these steps in this video so as not to drag this one out for double the length it should be. So again, I put another link in the description. There's going to be more links in this one than ever, I think. So if you want a more in-depth on step-by-step -step building interiors, take a look at that. But for this particular one, it is slightly different. Hence, I'm showing you some of these steps in the fact that the current interior for this car has got the little legs on it to keep the axles down. So hence, I've done it of this almost like a little ladder chassis within a chassis, I suppose. With the little cutouts just to keep the axles down. So when you put the body on, the body will touch the top of the styrene. It'll push down on the axles, blah, 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 blah. So... That's why I'm doing this one slightly different. I'm just showing you some of these steps, but it often can be a little bit time consuming and it doesn't always look too pretty when you're doing these foundations to the to the interior. It hasn't some of the parts aren't even seen to be fair, but in order to get the wheel wells in the right place and in order to get the roll cage to mount in the right place and the steering wheel and the dashboard to mount in, you know, you've got to do all this little legwork underneath so whilst it is therapeutic it does sometimes drag on a little bit so you can spend half the night just doing bits that aren't ever going to be seen but hey ho it makes uh for a unique custom but here we go we're on to the rear wheel well so all i've done is put a little semicircle by cutting round and adding a little bit more from the wheel and mounting that on and then with a little thin strip here it's good enough to bend if it's too thick when you start trying to bend really tight stuff on this scale it does tend to snap if you put some of the mech on it then when you're gluing it and it'll just ping and then it's it's completely ruined so obviously the thinner material let it bend naturally then you're all you're doing is dabbing a little bit of the mech glue on it and it'll it'll sit quite nice but there's the original interior now and i want to well, I say I want to keep the dashboard. I don't want to start filing and making one out of Epo putty, to be to be quite honest. So why not just cut this old dashboard assembly out? So a little bit of cutting and a little bit of sawing. I've managed to keep the center console and the whole dashboard assembly bit nice and straightforward and just trimming off little bits again just so it'll fit nicely into the interior and there we have it and this is a perfect little bucket seat from edition six i've used these many times now can't rate them highly enough really good little detailed additions if you want to go to this much trouble but they're really good and some come with little seat belt moldings into the bucket seat so you can just simply paint them some don't i prefer them not to so i can add some little seat belts which i'll do in a short while but i think you'll agree they do look the part really good little in resin molded items so on now to the roll bar and what i've started to do on some of these finer ones is rather than drill the base or drill the chassis i've started adding just a little slither of tube cut down to size and that's perfect for a little mounting of the roll case then it'll simply slot into that hole and there's no wobble around whilst i'm trying to glue it so little foot plate if you like so now it'll sit in by just simply plugging it in like that looks like a good flagpole that looks pretty good so all i'm going to do with making these is like i always do is just go off a wing and a prayer by simply 
looking where I think the first bend should go and just going with it. Keep bending and keep moving and keep bending until you've got a fairly accurate, fairly good looking roll cage. And the, the styrene I'm using is a two mil item. Sorry, 1.2. The two mil is for the tube that I use at the bottom. So the actual styrene bit I've got in my hand now is 1.2. Anything bigger than that, I think it tends to look a little bit out of scale. So this sits just nicely scale wise. So there's the start, both sides. And just to finish up, just add a few braces across it, across the rear of it, across the back of it. And by taking your time, you'll come out with something pretty much like that. They're always different. You know, sometimes I look at reference pictures and think, well, that's going to be a little bit too complicated or, you know, for this one, the mold in the, the, the window inside is going to catch that, catch it. So I tend to just go off the top of my head to be brutally honest. And this time it doesn't look too shabby. And yeah, I keep making sure it rolls as well. <laughs> Always good to make sure it rolls. Okay, on to this front end where I've opened up this bumper now. I want to make it look like it's got a real intercooler on the front. So just some staples, simply pushed into a little slither of the styrene and bent over. I've seen other people cut these down, but to be honest, by tend to bend them over only because it gives it a little bit more thickness and actually when I finally get around to showing you some engines on the engines I do I use them for radiators and intercoolers that little bit of styrene that sticks over the top you can then put another piece on the top of that to make it look like the top of a radiator or you know it's got a little uh, expansion fella hole uh, cap on the top if you like so you can actually start adding more details that's the reason why I tend to do that I had to cut out the front just to make it sit in a little bit neater or flusher and once it's in position once it's glued in you don't have to paint that or anything it'll sit nice there in the natural metal finish so quickly going round and painting the car now I always waft a little bit of primer all over these cars just my personal preference I know some people don't but I like to do it and again I love the look of these primed cars I keep I've said it earlier on in this video I must do a little range of just simple grey primed cars to be honest I think they're pretty cool so I'll finish up some tiny little details now one of them being some wing mirrors and I've done this with the EPO putty before I've molded it to shape and cut it and sanded it and filed it down this time I'm just going to use a bit more of a simpler or quicker method by just cutting some round tube what's a round bar solid actually and then slicing it in half that way you've already got one profile's rounded one side and one side's already then flat for where the mirror would be. So a little bit of a quicker way of doing it really. And then with one of it, very, very tinily with a little pin vise, pin drill, is just give enough of a hole to stick in some uber tiny little styrene rod which would be the mounting for the said wing mirror or door mirror I keep saying wing mirrors they're not always mounted to the wings anymore the side mirrors door mirrors but you will come up with something like that a little bit of filing may be needed a little bit more slithers taken off trimming down but essentially a really quick 
10 minute job to get a pair of fairly decent looking side mirrors all that we need to do is just drill the side and i'm not going to use my fast speedy drill for this i'm just going to take the time and just plop a hole in by hand and you will get something like that which will look better naturally when i've finished it and painted it so just to redress the rear end of it again use some chrome bandits i'm going to put another spoiler on this time that one that looks a little bit better than the rather large one of the original casting and i'm just going to use some proper little bending pieces to bend these parts because it, it has got some bends in these you could use some flat nosed pliers some small flat nosed pliers but i've got a proper little bending set and it does offer a little bit more precision I feel anyway here you go simply follow the line on the etched part and knock it over and you've got a nice little bend a voila there you go the only thing I want to add to it is the legs that mount to this spoiler. I didn't quite like the ones that were on the little sprue from Chrome Bandit. So I'm just going to make my own little set and just put a little few details in by putting a few holes and whatever you, and then offering a little lick here of the mech just to stick it all together and come up with some tiny little legs like that and once they're painted and stuck on they'll look a lot neater but there's the finished little assembly just looks a little bit more chunkier I think plus I didn't really like the design of the other one so just my personal taste anyway so that's the rear spoiler so the last little detail is a rather unnoticeable unless I've pointed this out is the recovery hooks the toe eye hooks which once you put a little hole in once you've cut them to sized sanded them down and painted them you'll barely notice them when they're on the finished car but so quickly applying these decals that i've made earlier on really easy and straightforward to do once you've cut them precisionly to shape bathe them only for it takes anything from 10 to 40 seconds depending on how big the decal is and again depending on what sort of surface you're putting it on if you've got lots of contours you might want to just dab a little microsol underneath just to soften it but i very rarely do that because most of them are quite big surfaces they go on so quick roundup now of a little bit of paint and there's not much on this one just the bucket seat just the dashboard a bit of the roll bar um but nevertheless just quickly show you a couple of little processes wandering around doing this i always as i've said in the past tend to stir the pots and use the paint off the bottom of the stick rather than all the oily bits that settled at the top to do the painting and then with the seat belts this time i've painted some masking tape to offer a little bit better conformity than the rigid vinyl stickers and it's something i did on 124th cars a long time ago but i actually used it to replicate sort of vinyl hoods and uh, canvas tops and what have you and i'd completely forgot about it and it wasn't until somebody mentioned it in the last video why don't you use masking tape instead of the vinyl and it completely jobbed my memory he was right so kudos to that guy for jogging my memory again but 
it's especially at this scale has made it a lot easier to conform to this time so thank you on to the windscreen and i've done this a few times in the past just to get rid of these horrible little blue or any colored glass assembly for that matter simply follow the original piece as a template and make some to stay to shape and stick in so that is the end of how i've built it so let's have a quick reminder of what she looked like it doesn't look too bad to be completely fair but nevertheless it's not to my taste naturally and here we have a little team transport which i will show you in another video or the albeit a different style carrying said toyota supra whilst it may not have the same wheels replica as the original japanese touring car or gt car it's the closest two i could find so there's them little tow hooks on the front you can just spot there and on the rear uh, there's now the painted spoiler legs you can see parts of the interior now with the roll bar that rear diffuser there i've left the windows down on this so you can see in but just kept that rear quarter window in place see the brake discs it's another one i've enjoyed building this time around just something a little bit different from another series or another manufacturer um as i mentioned about the decals i will announce something soon on that it's no prizes for guessing i suppose being a bit cryptic on it but i will start going into some sort of production rather shortly so keep an eye out on videos instagram facebook's and all that sort of stuff so that will be coming soon so there's the rear aerodam splitter you can just about see the brake discs now through the wheels and all in all another one i've enjoyed to build and again on this truck um really cheap to buy i will do another video on this truck actually and where to get them and how to modify it and whatnot but here it is adding to the rest of my little castrol collection that i've been sort of unwittingly making not realizing how many i've made but i do like the castrol livery but as always i hope you've liked this please continue to subscribe and share the pages until next time thanks very much for watching